So I'm not sure if everyone's heard of Envoy, but we'll rectify that soon enough. Now this is what Lyft's topology looked like three and a half years ago. The reason why it may seem familiar, not only because one of us or anyone uh, who's familiar with Lyft has presented Lyft's topology in the past, but this to network topology is actually pretty familiar and is actually, there's variations of this topology seen across the industry. And some of the issues that were seen with this topology and that we experienced personally at Lyft was an example of the ELBs is lack of observability. Another issue too is that there's numerous technologies, right? Like if I were to pull the entire room right now and ask for everyone's favorite language, obviously it's C++, right? We would get different <laughs> answers. <laughs> Just like if we were asked for different, what everyone's favorite proxy back in the day was, we would get different answers. So a lot of some of those issues that I mentioned and the other, is other issues that we had experienced were actually the forcing function in defining Envoy's mission. The network should be transparent to applications. When network and application problems do occur, it should be easy to determine the source of the problem. And with that, I hand it off to Jose to talk about where Lyft is right now. So taking that mission statement as our North Star, we shifted the paradigm into the service mesh. More specifically, a service mesh where alongside every single microservice, an Envoy sidecar was running alongside. With the service mesh, we were able to flow all of the network tra traffic through an Envoy instance. What this allows us to do is to see a lot of improvement in a lot of dimensions, but specifically three dimensions that are very important. One, we have the same configuration language in all of our topology. Number two, we have the same network guarantees at every hub of the network to defend our microservices from the common pitfalls of distributed systems. And three, when problems do occur, because they do occur, uh, we have the same observability metrics at every hub of the network, allowing our, engin our engineers to effectively and efficiently pinpoint the problems. So in all of these dimensions, what we're doing is reducing the cognitive load of engineers as they move from piece to piece of Lyft's ecosystem. So this is where Lyft is today. As you can see, we have deployed Envoy everywhere in our network topology, all the way from the edge, both at the ingress and egress, to the service mesh, and even fronting our storage primitives. Envoy has become a keystone piece of our infrastructure, allowing us to scale both technically but also socially. Now at Lyft, we have an organization of several thousand engineers managing several hundreds of microservices with millions of RPS. However, thanks to open sourcing and the support of the CNCF, the scope of Envoy has grown wider than Lyft. Thanks, Jose. We open sourced Envoy in September <clears throat> of 2016, and it has been an absolutely incredible ride. It, it blows my mind to see what has happened in the past two and almost two and a half years. Uh, from all three major cloud vendors now offering Envoy managed products to many, many end users, uh, to tens of startups that are building products now based on Envoy, uh, it, it's just, absolutely incredible and we're very thankful to all of you for what has happened in such a short period of time. And as was previously announced, we've just been uh, announced a CNCF graduated project. That's a great milestone for the project. It's an indication that the larger community realizes that Envoy is not going to go anywhere. It's ready for wider enterprise adoption and that's really fantastic. I'm often asked why has Envoy become so popular in such a short period of time? Because if you look at it, uh, the growth in again, just two years has been truly, truly incredible. And I think it's for a couple of different reasons. The first is performance. When we originally built Envoy, we recognized that if it was going to be deployed in different edge scenarios, in service to service scenarios, and in other, other types of proxy deployments, it had to be fast, particularly at the tail. So we focused on performance. Reliability, even as we've scaled the project to many developers, many maintenance organizations, we've been able to keep reliability very high, focusing on uh, integration tests, uh, fuzzing, uh, tight code reviews, all of those types of things. 
modern code base, many of our uh, proxy competitors um, are, are uh, not in GitHub. Uh, they don't use modern best practices around code development. Uh, Envoy's written in modern C++, which has been very uh, important to many people uh, taking it up. Extensibility, Envoy was built from the ground up to have numerous extension points. We allow people to bring in the code and build all types of things on top. And that's led to an absolutely incredible number of use cases that people have built, truly amazing. Observability, uh, you've heard uh, everyone talk about it. Envoy spits out copious uh, stats, logging, tracing, allowing people to build higher layer systems, which is amazing. Our configuration API, which we call our XDS API, that's really the cornerstone of Envoy, that has allowed us to scale to uh, you know, decouple the data plane from the control plane. We've seen many control planes built on top of Envoy, uh, and that's been really fantastic. And finally, last, it's all of you. It's the fact that Envoy does not have any paid product behind it. It's a community-driven uh, product. We make technology-first decisions, and we let all of you decide what the long-term roadmap is. So thank you very much, everyone.